All right, let's continue to talk about how we perceive other people. This time, let's talk about how we can try to distinguish between truth and deception. If you think about it, social perception would really be much easier if people didn't lie. But people do lie. We've got lots of examples, of course. Think about Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton got up in front of the American public and he wagged his finger at us and said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. And of course, we found out later that that was a lie. He admitted that to us. Same thing with Lance Armstrong. He was one of my favorite athletes. I mean, really impressive. Won the Tour de France several times. And although several people suggested that he was doping, he was so passionate about saying that he never did. And it turns out that he was lying. Think about the people who we trust daily, who bring us our news. Brian Williams, huge name, still on TV. He's not on the nightly news, though, anymore because he was taken off. Why? Because he lied to us many times. One time he said that he was embedded with um, some military personnel on a plane and they were being shot at. Turns out that simply wasn't true. It made a really good story. It was really interesting. It just simply wasn't true. Let's not get on them too much, though. Think about yourself now. If you're like most people, you lie. Um, maybe not every day, but many people lie every day. The lies that we tell aren't always big lies. Sometimes we tell relatively small lies, but people lie pretty darn frequently, and that probably includes you. I know it includes me. So let's ask this question. Are we any good at detecting lies? And there have been hundreds of studies, usually formed about the same way, where we have one group of people who make either truthful statements or statements that include some type of deception. In other words, they're lying. And then there's another group of people, the research subjects, and their job is to listen to the statements that these people are making, maybe watch a video of these people as they're, as they're expressing either a truthful statement or a lying statement. And then it's up to those subjects to determine was the person telling the truth or was the person lying? So there's been lots of research on this over the years. So are we any good at detecting these lies? Well, when you look at that research over the long run, the results show that people are only accurate about 54% of the time, which is right on par with guessing. So the answer is not really, we're not very good. Why is it that we're not very good? Well, we often attend to the wrong channels. We're often looking in the wrong places for lies. And even when we're looking in the right places, it's not easy to tell who's lying. But let's talk about some of those channels. People initially focus on, you know, like the face, um, the words that people are actually using, you know, like what's the content of their message. And think about it. Those things are actually very easy to control. And because they can be controlled very easily by us, they can't be trusted. Because if I'm lying, I'm obviously motivated to deceive you. So I'm going to, I have control over the things that I'm going to say. I'm going to craft the best story I can. I have control over my face. So I'm going to try to look as sincere as possible. So we can't trust the face very well. And we can't trust what people are saying very well. Well, the body kind of leaks a little bit more than the face. We have somewhat less control. I mean, obviously we have full control over our bodies, but you know, there's a lot going on in the world, particularly when we're telling a lie. And there's only so many things that we can attend to at once. So I might be fidgeting. Um, I might be squirming in my chair. Now, in general, those types of cues don't seem to reliably predict when people are lying. However, in research that has uh, looked at people who are looking at someone's face when they're telling truthful or deceptive statements compared to people who are looking at someone's body when they are telling truthful or deceptive statements. People who are looking at the body are a little bit better at distinguishing when people are lying. Now, that doesn't mean that they're still any better than chance, that their performance over the long run is any better than chance, um, but people who are looking at bodily cues hands, feet, body squirming around, sometimes seem to do a little bit better. Here's something interesting. The one channel that seems to be somewhat more reliable in giving people away when they're lying is their voice. Now, of course, we have some control over our voice. I can speak relatively lowly if I want. I can speak relatively high if I want. But remember, we can only control so many things at any given time when I'm writing a conversation with somebody. Liars' voices 
sometimes show a trend in that they they hesitate at first when they start to speak. Because remember, you, you need to think about you know, like this lie. You need to put things together so it comes out co coherently. Then they tend to speed up uh, as time goes by and the, the pitch of their voice tends to rise a little bit. But think about this. It's, it's hardly like I've just given you some method for determining when someone's lying because it's hard to tell if someone's hesitating any more than they normally hesitate. I know lots of people where I can ask them a question and it seems like I can go out and get a cup of, a cup of coffee before they start their answer. Um, we all are different in the way that we speak. So unless I have a lot of experience with someone and I know how they speak normally, I have some baseline measurement, it's hard to tell if they are hesitating at any given moment or if they're speaking uh, faster than usual or if their pitch is higher than it might be otherwise. So it's, it's very hard to really pick these things apart. That said, the voice tends to be the most reliable channel. When we look at people who are in a situation where they, they have to essentially determine if people are lying, it's part of their job, um, we find that they do a little bit better than other people. So here's some research uh, looking at a variety of different groups of people, and they were shown videotapes of women who are either telling the truth or lying about their feelings. And these people were asked to determine if they were telling the truth or lying. So remember, just guessing, you'd expect that they would be right about 50% of the time. And most of these scores are right around 50%. So we're looking at people who have CIA, FBI, military training, police investigators, trial judges, psychiatrists. These are people who are dealing with people on a regular basis, and they're often hearing about people lying. None of the people in these groups did st uh, statistically significantly better than chance. So even though these numbers are slightly better than 50%, the differences that we see there from 50% are the types of differences that we would expect just due to sampling error. Now, one thing that's interesting about these people is that they not only speak to people a lot and look at them a lot when they're telling them truths and lies, but these people often find out the truth later on. You see, you and me in normal situations, we have people lying to us all the time and we often never find out the truth. So we don't have outcome information. If I'm going to learn something, if I'm going to be able to determine what someone looks like when they lie, I need to be able to see what they look like when they lie and then pair that up with information later on about was that truthful or was that a lie? That's the only way I can draw some type of meaningful association. Well, these people get some of that experience because, of course, they're investigating people. And sometimes people will say to you, well, I'm innocent. I didn't do that crime. And later on, you figure out, yes, they did. So then you can say to yourself, I, I remember how that person was acting when he was lying. They might be able to even watch a videotape during an interview that they had, and they can see right then he was lying. And even in those situations, they're still not doing much better than chance when it comes to detecting when someone's lying. The only people who statistically significantly beat chance were U.S. Secret Service agents. And even they didn't do all that well. About 64% of the time they were correct in this particular research study. Here's one thing that's kind of interesting and can help us as we move toward the future. We realize that lying requires cognitive effort. This is one reason why I don't lie a lot. And that's because I just, I just don't have the ability to do it well. It's, it's, it's too taxing for me. It's too hard. I can't remember the lie. It's so much easier to remember the truth. Well, just keep that in mind. That's true of everybody. Lying requires a little bit more of our own attention. Thus, if we put people in a situation where we make it hard for them to communicate with us. It makes it hard for them to lie successfully to us. And it could be that when they are lying to us in these situations, that we might be able to detect it, typically because of some type of bodily cue that they're, that they're giving off. And again, we look at various things like their face, the words they're using, how their body is reacting, how their voice sounds. So it could be when we put them in a situation where they have to exert extra cognitive effort and still lie, we might be able to determine they're lying a little bit better than otherwise. So for example, one thing we can do is ask them to tell their story. Because remember, when we think someone's lying, they're usually being somehow interrogated or we're talking to them and asking them to recount what happened. Ask them to tell that story in reverse chron chronological order. That's not an easy thing to do. So it's like, all right, tell me again what you did last night. I know you're saying that you weren't there at the crime scene. Tell me what you did, but start at the end of the night and work backwards. You know, you might put together a story when you're lying. And of course, when you put together that story, you start at the beginning of the night and you, you think about how you're going to lie. 
and talk about what you did throughout that night all the way to the end of the night. So now when I ask you to tell that story in reverse order, that's not going to be easy for me to do. And particularly if I'm looking you right in the eye and I'm saying, hey, look me in the eye. Let's, let's you know, be honest with me here. Look me in the eye when you're telling me this story. That's adding even additional burden. So with all that, it's possible that the person might at that point just admit it might be too hard for them to maintain the lie, or we might be able to pick up on some type of cue. And research has shown that when extra cognitive effort is uh, hoisted upon somebody, when they're asked to do these things, um, people who are doing interviews uh, are a little bit more likely to be able to determine uh, that the people are telling truths or telling lies. All right, that's about it for this section, but stay tuned because there's more social psychology coming up soon.